Ms. Smith um, is going to be running late. She, she may not be able to make it, um, so she's going to call and let us know about how far along we are to see if she um, should come. She has a prior engagement. But I really appreciate everybody um, making uh, the time to come today. I know that uh, we are really uh, excited about getting this part of the work done. Uh, and so um, I would just ask that we try to be as efficient as possible so we can stay within our time frame. Um, Basically, what I'd like to do is go through our governance norms and protocols, spend about 20 to 30 minutes on that, and then leave the rest of the time um, for a discussion of the goals, the priorities, and the committees. So um, with that being said, does everybody have everything that they need? Everyone's online and has their documents? Nope. What do you need? I, I um, printed them to the wrong printer, I think, because it's not in the Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'm sorry. Mr. I'm Butts sorry. has a copy for you. Um, all right. I have a bunch of stuff I don't need. All right. So um, for the board governance norms and protocols, um, this is something that we've done every year. Um, and so if we could just take it section by section and go over any feedback or comments that you have. What I was thinking was if there are revisions that are needed that we could get a revised sample out to everybody by Friday to have you review it so that by Monday we could have the revised version sent out and it could be approved hopefully for our meeting next Wednesday. So that's the timeline that I'm thinking of. Uh, so if we want to just start with the norms, does anybody have any uh, concerns or feedback with the norms on Section 1? Okay, Ms. Campson and Ms. Basine. I had a special individual one-on-one -on -one instruction on turning this on. Oh, it was already on. I think it's, I think it's, it's on. automatically it's on. on. You just have to so it's that I turn it. it on, but I don't look at the red thing. All right, this is the second lesson. Maybe next time I'll have it correct. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Just two things I wanted to, to mention. Okay. Uh, one, two, three. Number three, uh, we will be mindful of the different roles and responsibilities throughout the school system and main focused on policy and governance. I'd like to add oversight to that line because boards, that is their primary function is oversight. So that's when we run into problems when they're not using oversight. So that would be my suggestion for that one. And the one then two down, our work will be focused on our work as a board and not interfere with the day-to-day -day operations of the school system. I have an objection to the term not interfere with. I think it has a very negative connotation for the board's work, so I'd like to have that phrase taken out and a little bit of different wording there that's a little bit more professional than not interfere with. Those are my only two on those on the norms. Did you did you have a suggestion for the one that we were? I would have said something like, we will be focused on our work on policy, governance, and oversight, and leave the day-to-day -day operations of the school system to the superintendent, something like that, something that's less uh, negative sounding. OK. But that didn't have to be. That was just my suggestion, just okay. those two. OK. All right. Thank you, Ms. Bassine. Um, so I know toward the end of our training, we talked about uh, the Norfolk City School Member Guide, um, yes. which I think is, you know, great to have in place. I'm, I don't believe it needs to be in our norms because then, you know, we could say the same about maintaining our policy manual, maintaining other, I feel like norms are more behaviors and, and this is more of a tool. Um, so while I support having a member guide, I don't believe it needs to be in the norms. Madam Chair, I would, um, I don't disagree. I would just say that at some point we need to probably prepare it till it's actually in as, as a policy piece. And to, to that, um, so we do, so Section A of our policy manual does give us the opportunity to outline mm -hmm. pieces of the member guide. So 
just as a consideration, you know, we can mm -hmm. update. And so are you saying remove this as a norm and insert it into a policy and create a policy around it or put it in the policy guide? We, I don't believe we need to create a policy around it mm -hmm. because, you know, again, this is if I'm understanding what the content of the new member mm -hmm. guide is, um, you know, which would be, you know, how we operate, which would include norms, which we could include, which would include code of ethics, which would include contact information, things like that, mm -hmm. that we do already have a structure in place already within our policies to do mm -hmm. that. Um, but other aspects of it, like the contact information for who to call, who's in charge of this department. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm saying all of this without knowing what, I know you two had said you would take charge of it, but what your vision is for that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I guess I'm just thinking what I would um, anticipate might be part of that, I think is part of, um, some of that is already in policy through section A of our policy manual. Well, go ahead. And I mean, I wouldn't stand it. Standard operating procedures aren't necessarily policy, it's protocol. So in other words, it's taken what we've identified as policy or how we're going to do things. Right. And then it really kind of breaks it down how we do it. Um, and so that's all I'm saying is for that particular piece is that it's, you know, we need to just place it somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I know we don't have bylaws as a mm -hmm. group here, but needs to be placed somewhere mm -hmm. to say that this is our protocol right. book as to how we do things within right the and bylaws can be incorporated into the policies mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying mm -hmm. I just don't think it's a norm mm -hmm. when I, I support it yeah I just don't well, just a different place when I see this what I want to make sure is lasting for boards after boards after boards is that there is something in place um, for new members um, who come on to have c clear um, guidelines, uh, protocols, things like that. And so um, does anybody else have any other thoughts or opinions, Mr. Jordan, then yeah, Ms. Campson? I actually have some thoughts on that too, because the version of the guide that we had, you know, I went back and reviewed it again, and I recall why we never really formally adopted it, it had, um, so much legacy stuff from uh, superintendent to superintendent, board to board, that it um, um, it, it came like a hodgepodge of things. So part of what, in my view, what we're doing today is, you know, each time you get a new member, in essence, you get a new board. And so that board, uh, you know, working with the superintendent has to establish what its norms and protocols are going to be. So I think having the guide, if it's pared down where it mentions, uh, you know, at least looking at the old version, uh, you know, it has description in there around the role of the attorney or statement of economic interest, those types of things make sense to me. Mm -hmm. I'm worried that um, um, if we create a document and it becomes this legacy document, then rather than allowing new members who come on or any team to establish how it wants to operate, the tendency will be to carry over things from previous boards or governance teams that may or may not be relevant to the particular team in place. Mm -hmm. So I was also going to recommend that we uh, take it out of the, the norms, but that we also make sure that we um, pare it down if we're going to use the model that we had before. Because there's so much stuff in there, if you go back and look at I mean, it references uh, you know, uh, for example, ways that Dr. Bentley wanted to communicate with the public, which could be very different from Dr. Boone, which could be very different from somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have to uh, pare it down the, um, if we want it to, inside of our policies, you know, we can put some, you know, regulations in there or some additional descriptors that then allows for that board docs, um, mm -hmm policies and regulations to become our online repository. I'm just very nervous about us putting it in the book and then it carries over from board to board. And, um, and well, Carlos and Adele um, yeah. volunteered to work on it. Yes. And so I think that 
that's good feedback to give them yes. about legacy. Them. But there's there's a lot of good stuff in there that they probably you know new new folks can can use at least to just get a baseline on. Um, but hold on. Uh, and again, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just simply saying we have to be careful mm -hmm. because um, uh, very easily we could just say these are the way things are done, but folks come in and have new views and they may want to see things done in a different way, and so you have to provide an opportunity for that to mm -hmm. take place. Okay, Ms. Campson and then As a new member of the board, I would have appreciated having this notebook. Um, even if it, even I agree with um, Mr. Jordan, it, I'm sure it has a ton of legacy stuff that needs to be changed. I think had we got it, we would have had a couple months before we came on board to read it, and we would have been able to go through like we're doing with this and mark the changes we want, want to make. So I think it's helpful to have, and I really would like to have it. And I think we, we should know as a board that there are lots of things we need to change because it's a different board. So, and I want to talk a lot. And, but I do agree that this is the wrong place for it. It's not a norm. I could see it down in protocols. Mm -hmm. it, so we okay. need to find another home for it. But I, so I think kind of okay. to summarize really quick, it just seems like what we're all saying is we want the book. It needs to be revised. Mm -hmm. We need to find a home for the statement because mm -hmm. it def definitely isn't an example of a norm at all. And I've totally missed that. Uh, but it, I could see it fitting in protocols. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm. I, I just wanted to make a point of correction. So it's if you look at um, section B of our policy manual, there's uh, pieces of it that we can update. Uh, where Mr. Jordan said, you know, that could be our repository for because um, it's about school board governance. Mm -hmm. So that whole section is a place where we could perfect house some of that information. Okay, great. Yeah, I, and I'd just like to piggyback on what Mr. Jordan had mentioned in there, um, that it's, it's strong for, for boards to be able to have continuity um, and being able to refer back to what has um, occurred in the past. Um, in no way, just because something was there, um, what I used to talk about every time it's a brand new board and you have the authority and the power to, to change. But you need to have some foundational um, reference to be able to look at items and to be able to build and change from that. So um, I would also, if there isn't any objection potentially, and I, I agree with Ms. Campson, that because the SOPs are um, standard operating procedures protocol, um, that maybe what we do is we place it and remove it out of the norms and place it down in protocols um, if there's uh, no objection from the rest of the board. Okay. I don't have any objection, but I do think that ultimately when the document is produced, we all have to, you know, Review it it's got to be a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not anything that we agree on. All right. So feedback on the first section, add the word oversight to bullet point three, and then work on the language on bullet point five, and then move out, move out sec, uh, bullet point seven under protocols and adopt it within the, um, any carryover sections would be in the policy manual, section B of the policy manual. Am I hearing that correctly? Yes. Um, I don't see a need to add oversight to bullet point three because governance is the act of governing. So that is oversight. I think that's redundant. Okay. All right. Um, I'm in agreement with that. How does ever, Ms. Campson? I know that I, I you. I still would like to see it. I, okay. I mean, so I, you know, I respect what they're saying, but I still want to see the word oversight because I okay. think that that's something that that in the past I've seen missing mm -hmm. from the board is the oversight piece. It probably is part of governance, mm -hmm. but I think I'd just like to see it more explicitly listed. Okay. Uh, question. Sure. Just Ms. Campson, can you just like an example of oversight? What you. Budget, what you're to. budget oversight. Right, so. So we've seen, just say it, we've seen a situation a few years ago where um, lack of oversight led to the loss of $6 million. So to me, that was, there was oversight that could have, which is why the board at that time asked to have a timeline developed for the spending of title and grant money to be sure we didn't have that problem again. Right. And to me, that's an example of why it's kind of good to have oversight explicit. You know, it's not a hill I'm going to die on here. I just, that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I would go with the will of the board on it. Okay. I'll just say that um, I know when I was reading 
the sample calendar that they have in our book, um, that word actually does pop up a couple of times. Um, specifically, like say for instance for the month of August, progress report on indicators of success management oversight reports to the board. So, um, and it's listed almost every other month. Madam that, Chair, if, mm -hmm. I, if I may, you recall the large annual year planning calendar. Mm -hmm. We already identified the various reports that occur. With the exception of the month of July, financial reports are given um, as, mm -hmm. as required. And July is only because it's the closeout, the 13 month, the closeout piece. And so now, even in August, we will have that full closeout for the year. And so I do think that, as you related to the Quinn book, that we do have a, uh, a method in place to make sure that we're giving those reports. Also in that uh, annual planning document we have uh, when the board expects, and within the accountability plan, when the board expects certain uh, data discussions related to accountability planning. So I offer that also for consideration. Okay, all right. And if I may, I just would add in the example of the um, oversight of the, the Title I. You know, the board did uh, have work sessions and meetings and asked questions uh, about it. It was, um, you know, a combination of things. But mm. uh, I think inherent in the governance, as was mentioned, is the oversight. And, if, and as Dr. Boone mentioned, um, if we continue the process of the accountability plan, uh, you know, we can add those reports in there, which, which you know, we've, we've done. Mm -hmm. Well, could I just add one more thing? Sure. So will those reports, for example, for the grants include the exact place we are on spend out? Spend down so we don't have any big spending things happening? The quarterly reports, and those are, are published online, we have been doing, the board had asked us to do quarterly grant updates. And does that include the point you are at that time on the it, heading toward the 85 percent on Title I by the end of? It, it gives where we are at that point because, again, you know, we have to clo we close out a grant period at the end of the month and by the time we get into the board docket. It's, it's where we are at that point that the, the at end of the month report is published. And it's very specific to where we are in that spend out. It shows what it looks like in, in terms, and we have some posted online from the various meetings. It shows um, what the grant utilization has been, if any reimbursements have been sought, and what the, the balance is as of that point also. So at that point, I could look at that and it would tell me it's December and I'm looking at that report and it would tell me that on the, um, the 18 budget, that, it, that it, it, in December I'd spent out 50%. And in March, I was up to 75% on my way to the 85% spend out. And it will also show you where we will be spending any, which is a usual practice, carryover funds of grants. One of the things that Ms. Ingram and I have worked on and, and Carryover funds are only for 15% on that. We, we have carryover funds that we are allowed to expend and we write amendments for. So we will be reporting for both so that we also don't get into a place where we have gotten through the grant and now we're at the 11th hour on the carryover funds and we haven't spent those. That's so my we're, concern. So internally, we are monitoring both. Okay. So, there are no, so there are no big spend outs, for example, happening this summer? No. Okay, well, hold on. Let's, well, let's stay on task. Um, yeah. I, right, I, hear, I hear consensus on everything um, except for um, maybe not necessarily entire board consensus over the word oversight, although um, it was a suggestion by Ms. Campson. Um, so I, that's something that we can come back to. Let's go ahead and move on to the protocols. Um, anybody uh, have any feedback on the protocols as they're presented in the bud in the document dr. Gabriel mm -hmm. um, if I could just get a clarification on the process so we're if if we are working to revise it to have for adoption for next week um, should we as each item suggestion should we determine will of the board and then you know um, slate that correction or revision as as needed yeah that's that's so, what that's what I need to hear from you guys okay, so if you're I, if, I feel like I heard there was a 
you know, will of the board around the use of oversight, unless I am mishearing. I hear that oversight is suggested by Ms. Campson. Uh, Ms. Martin says that oversight is very similar to governance. Mr. Jordan says oversight is similar to governance. Right, I'm in agreement with that as well. Okay. And I agree with Ms. Campson that we could have added, so it's. Okay, and I, I'm I'm fine if we want to add the word oversight in there um, as well. I do, I do think that it does have a similar meaning with governance, um, but we can just we can come back to that. Um, but as far as the other topics that we did discuss, I didn't hear any other um, disagreement on the suggestion that she had had with rewording bullet point number five. We can work on that and get that sent out to everybody. And then removing number seven. That's correct. I agree with both those. Okay. Me too. Okay. All right. Protocols. Anything on protocols? We're going to delete H. Um, yeah, we voted on that last time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ms. Pacine? Um, can we uh, maybe talk a little bit more about meeting agenda development? Sure. Um, and specifically, how other board members provide input, suggestions, and ideas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in the past, we have you know, either sent them directly to the chair, we sending topics for suggestion during the meeting via email to the chair, CCing the rest of the board and the superintendent, or you know how I think we need to determine how we're going to do that, and then feedback when uh, topics are. Uh, going to be addressed, you know, that kind of uh, what the process is going to be. Mm -hmm. I would think that that was where those SOPs would kind of get into it. I think that the protocol that's here is kind of high level, and then you add it into the SOPs to kind of tell you this is how you do it, timeline and so forth. <coughs> so we would need to develop that. Um, kind of look at <clears throat> that process. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just again. So, um, yeah, I, I just want to offer again. I, I'm, I'm concerned again about the SOP piece because um, the value that we have here, it's, um, you know, the entire team together deciding on high level protocols. Um, maybe I have to wait and see the draft of the SOPs to see how that, how that works. But can you just describe for now um, how, the, how you view the meeting agenda development taking place as it relates to this protocol? Well, the way that I have seen the agenda and have worked on the agenda with you is that we have a, a calendar, that there are certain things that we have to do at certain points of the year, um, and we need to be briefed on those topics um, in order for us to vote on them. And so those things are set into place. From that point on, I think that this board um, is going to determine what we want on the agenda. And that's going to be based a lot, I feel, on really wrapping ourselves around the accountability plan, around the strategic goals, around the priorities that we discuss. And that's going to lead us in our work. If other topics come up that we need to hear about um, that, aren't ne that are not already touched upon in the accountability plan, then for right now, you know, until we work on the operating procedures, certainly send that information. You can send it to me. I will give it to Dr. Boone, and then we can discuss it in uh, agenda planning and then get back with you on how we can honor your request in a timely fashion if it's, you know, within the time frame that we have. That's all right. I mean, I, I, I really want us to focus on 
the accountability plan and let that be the driver of how we um, look at, make decisions, change policy or bolster policy and govern. Right, which is, yeah, mm -hmm. what we've been doing, right? Mm -hmm. I just ask a follow-up. It's like, so when we had the um, occasion a couple weeks ago where the we had a meeting and the superintendent wasn't included. So how does that, what, where would that fall in terms of uh, protocol? So there's the board, there's the superintendent, there's the governance team. And I have to be respectful that we are seven members. And if I have a request from certain members, about something that is going to occur in an executive session, then I go to our legal folks and I discuss it with them. And um, certainly um, that was something that we had not experienced in the past. And I don't foresee that happening again in the future. But um, that's why we have our, our legal folks and, um, you know, Just so you know, I'm just asking process-wise mm -hmm. because part of what um, yeah. what came out of that was you know some members asked for something other members didn't know about it so I'm just trying to figure out is that I'd like to is this the setting up the agenda or are you talking about I mean because I'm trying to figure out how that falls within this item here well because the under the protocol we're talking about setting up the agenda Items on the agenda, not individuals oh. on the meeting. So, is it germane to the item here? I think it well, is, because yeah. it says all board members can provide input, suggestions, ideas for agenda topics. Agenda topics. Okay. On the agenda. Okay. The written docket. Okay. Not individuals in the room. Okay. So my question is, then, what is the protocol for if it's not an agenda topic? Then, wouldn't that be an agenda topic? Wouldn't that be part I, of the agenda, the meeting discussion? I'm not I, trying to. Yeah. No, no. I'm not trying. I'm, I'm just, just trying to make sure we this. keep in framework yeah, of our time I, and it, right now we're talking about agenda setting up the agenda the docket and not individuals in the room so i'm just trying to make sure we're germane to the topic that's all <clears throat> right but maybe that is and maybe that's it. something we park a lot and we come back to right right, right that, now or if you're adding something else yeah right that that could be an that's addition if, to, if there to, what i'm hearing from you mr jordan is that if there is a request that's made by a board member and it affects um a item of discussion on the agenda. Correct. How is that information going to be shared with everybody? I, he I, I, I hear you on that. I, I, underst yes. I understand what you're saying and um, noted, definitely noted. Got it. That's something we'll work through. Yeah, I, I think it's something that we should work through. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, Any other, okay, we're almost at 4.30. Any other items on the um, protocols? Um, Madam yes. Chair, I'm skipping over the notification to the superintendent that I objected to earlier about when for school visits because that's worked out perfectly fine. So uh, that worked out fine. But I am concerned about item U, which is data. I don't know. Okay. Data request, board members may make may make a request i think it should be make will make data request and i don't like the term data not readily available if i want to ask our staff which would include the superintendent for data you know i should be able to get it without going and looking on programs and computers and everything directly to the chair which is what i did at the meeting last week the chair will ask the superintendent i'm not quite sure will direct the superintendent to provide not how long it's going to be but to give it to her by a certain time. And then I don't like, should the request be fulfilled? What does that mean? If I'm asking for data, why should it be, should it be fulfilled? It should be fulfilled. That's why you know, we, I, I, I have a problem with that whole, I don't have any problem with going to the, the, to the chair and asking for data, which she then relays that request or direction to the superintendent. But all this business about she'll let us know and 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 if if it's if it's going to be fulfilled and I, why does there be a choice there if, if a board member wants to have information about something then that should be forthcoming i don't see 
I don't understand this wording at all. Okay. All right, Ms. Martin and then Ms. Bassine. Um, so what I'm understanding is that you're you're hearing bias in this language. Is I'm not sure if bias is what I would say. I mean, I I'm, think I'm, I'm hearing, hearing bias. It's like I, this bias that it's not going to happen and blah, or it may blah. not happen. And there's right? a better way it could that be it's written optional, to get the same right? Thing. That's what I want. So I agree with I, that. I don't mind having the direction. You I mean, know, it's just, it, it's a protocol, so it has to be general wording, mm -hmm. and it should say this is the process. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair. So like, if then. Right. Right. Can I get yes. to Dr. Oh, Boone yeah. and then? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Just simply, my understanding when I came into the district um, was that the intent of T, and I agree it maybe could be worded better, was that if there was a significant data request, a, a, you know, a large report, a large file, that the board would poll itself to see if there was consensus for mm -hmm. that to be done. Yeah. And I think that's where that language came in. But again, this is what I learned as I came into the district. And again, what has been deemed to be effective governance, that the board acts as a, as a collective body. And if there's something outside of reports that have been generated, then the board itself would, the chair would poll to determine, is this something that everyone is interested in to determine, the, therefore, should a significant amount of staff time be spent toward generating that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to okay. clarify what my take on this was mm -hmm. when I came to the district. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, <clears throat> that's, she just hit what I was mm -hmm. going to say. And I think that's not, I think that's the piece that's missing in this is that, um, you know, data requests will be shared with the full board for consensus. Um, Cause that's, I think, I think we need to have that, uh, um, that if we, um, for a data request, that if you're gonna request something to me, that it should be copied to the entire board right. so that just in case somebody else has the same question. So we need to do some work on this, this one right here. I have Good. a concern with consensus. Okay. Because that means one person can block a request that I might consider or someone else might consider important information that or I would like to have. Okay. So maybe not consensus. Or will of yeah, will, the will, will of the board. board right. I, I'm okay. perfectly comfortable with Where that. Where one person cannot, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. If I may. But the, the, the deeper principle behind it is not to try to limit data requests. It is trying to find a balance between our role as governance, the superintendent's job for day-to-day -day operations, and very easily what can occur is as we try to balance um, how much time the staff and administration may be responding to data requests from us, then that could be taking time away from the responsibility they have in terms of supporting the, the work that's happening in the classroom. But I think so, we address that with the will of the board. That way one person can't I'm be just constantly simply, asking. I'd just like to share some thoughts on it. Okay. And, uh, um, and having gone back and kind of sat through as previous boards have dealt with this long before I was on the board, um, part of what they were experiencing was they would get these data requests. And so then first the board would have these debates about whether or not they wanted to do the data requests. Then oftentimes the data requests would go forward. Then you would spend or the administration would spend how much time trying to fulfill the data request, then the data request came forward, and then then what? So it's just trying to find some balance between uh, the responsibility of the board having the information that it needs to make the decisions, while at the same time not have, whether it's one member or a collective of members, um, ask for uh, lots of data with not necessarily a particular end in mind. The last thing I'll just say, one of the advantages that we have with our board doc system is a lot of the reports and a lot of the data requests from over time are yeah. available as mm -hmm. attachments inside of board docs. So I just mm -hmm. think, you know, I don't think it needs to be in a, um, in a protocol, but I would just encourage that our first um, line of action would be either go into board docs and see if we could find it or just ask if the information is available before it gets to the point that we're trying to task the, the superintendent on the on the data request. Got it. Madam okay. Chair. Mm -hmm. um, if you look back to under norms on the sixth bullet, it talks about the same thing. So essentially we could just re, uh, delete you under protocols. Which one? T. T. 
to you. you and we'll maintain norms. open communication. Uh, if considerable work is all. required to generate data, a minimum of five members must endorse the request. Mm -hmm. Oh, there mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We, there it yeah, is. We did add that. We there the it is. Yeah. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Good catch. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect catch. All right. Great. And again, the goal is to work on these revisions, get it out to everybody by Friday, and then have it um, have you all the weekend to review it and give provide any feedback. Madam Chair, I'll talk to you offline about oh. Friday because it's a, oh we well. have a full day of something tomorrow, so I don't know, but okay. I'll talk to you later. Okay, about that got it. Okay, um, so can we move on to the VSBA code of conduct? I just want to make sure I'm clear. Are we dropping the uh, data request protocol? What I'm hearing is that based on norm six, we will maintain open communication. Information shared with one board member will be shared with all members. If considerable work or time is required to generate data, a minimum of five members must endorse the request. Right. So under, under the norm, the, the principle behind the norm is what one board member has, all board member has. Right. Under the protocol, what it's trying to get to is if you do have a data correct request, what's the process? So that's where it's speaking to sending the request to the board chair and so forth. Mm -hmm. So rather than just simply deleting you, maybe we streamline, but I think it's important that we know the process of you make the request to the chair and what that process is. Um, mm -hmm. And even if we have to repeat like five out of seven or whatever, we can do that. Mm -hmm. But there is a big difference. To, to put that under the protocol. The norms yeah. And the protocol. Right. Okay. So isn't that, isn't that under G, under communication between board members and superintendent? Yeah. Communication that's between board mm -hmm. members and superintendent? That's communicating. Uh, I think that's specific that's about a little different. data requests is important. Data. Yeah. So, I mean, is there no objection? It's just moving the if considerable work or time is required to generate data. Then that'd be the five members. Yeah. Could we just move that over? I'm fine. Right. Move, that, move that piece. Lauren, the... how do you feel about that? That sounds good to me. Okay. Okay. Good compromise. Okay, so we're going to move. Okay. All right. So we're going to move the language from the norm to there. Is that what you're mm -hmm. saying? I think it, but we're going to still keep that as the norm. The yes, yes, we're going to still we keep it as a norm. Both yeah, places. yeah, both yeah. places. I'm just taking that the considerable work line. Mm -hmm. On the, uh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. I, I know Ms. Campson also had um, brought forward uh, under the school visit piece. Uh, so we currently have that the board members shall notify. I think our practice has been that we would try to do it 24-hour uh, notice. Do we need to, I would recommend that maybe we um, add that, because uh, otherwise, you know, notification could take place five minutes before you walk into a building. And so. I don't um, agree. So I'm is sorry. It, I don't agree with that. I don't know why there needs to be a 24-hour notice. I mean, I've been going into visits, and I always now, following this, this protocol ex exactly as it was written, I always send an email to the superintendent, but I don't see why I need to send it 24 hours ahead or well, three hours ahead. Well, the um, okay. so the the point is is that um, as we talked about before, when we're doing school visits. We're trying to give uh, consideration to the principal. Well, the principal would have, was already was already notified. I'm I'm not dealing with anything specific. Okay. I'm just speaking to the okay. protocol that just as we were talking about with the data request is really just about consideration. So if a um, board member gives a two hour notice, if, you, if I contact the principal tomorrow and say, I'm gonna come see you in a couple of hours, um, the level of authority between me and the school principal, the principal is going to find a way to oblige me. So I don't know all the things that the principal may have on his or her agenda for the day. So very easily, if school board members are just showing up at um, uh, to meet with principals without some adequate notice, then it opens up the door for the principal again to uh, feel obliged, uh, not be able to say no, rework agenda, and then we can unintentionally then uh, 
uh, negatively impact whatever the principal is trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So the reason I was suggesting the some level of notification of some period, then to me it gives uh, us time to give notice to the administration. It gives the principal time to prepare um, for us to uh, for us to visit, and it still allows us to to make the visit and have whatever mm -hmm. tour okay. or whatever it is that we are okay. trying to gain. From the yeah, that's why. So, Madam Chair, M the school visits. Um, is this a carryover from the prior school board? The language. Yes. yes. Okay. So we didn't have 24 hours there, and did we have any problems with that occurred or us? Yes. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I think in the, the discussion that we had during the um, retreat, mm -hmm. um, it was talking about the norm would be that we would communicate with the a principal, you know, get permission, you know, hey, they were coming in, that type of thing, and not to add undo. The other thing that I kind of always look on the other side by making a um, so restrictive sometimes is that let's say that you were trying to principal was trying to get in contact with the board member for an invitation and you three hours before they finally got in contact with you you still follow the protocol and notifying the superintendent but if we put a 24 hours it would still be considered a violation type of thing so yeah. I'm just my thing is it's not to get permission it's more or less to be courteous to the school staff and then also to, to, to give respect to the superintendent let them know that we've been in um, in your in a building um, so I would, I don't have a problem. I just think, you know, if we see a problem that arises out of the board that we readdress it, but I think that it's pretty good the way it is now and that we just make a commitment to meet with the, uh, you know, to, to stay within line. Give appropriate time. Just mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Okay. And then, okay. I've been visiting schools all month. And what I've done is call the principal and say, when are you available? And none of them and it would never occur to me to walk into a school without notifying the principal well ahead i've been a, i was a principal for 15 years i loved having the school board it may come in they always know i never had them just walk in I'd go, you know that's just common courtesy i notify them way ahead but i would have no problem with something going in here that says that the principal is notified 24 hours ahead i personally think that that's too that's short too for short. notice for I a principal. Think that's too short um, yeah. You know, I scheduled one but, today that won't co happen until next week. I'm trying to almost go a week out, and, mm -hmm. and when they're busy, they're busy. And I would also, you don't go when they're testing. You don't go, you know, I wouldn't go during work week. I wouldn't go during the first few weeks of school. Just, just common courtesy. But certainly having that in there, my thing was trying to remember to send the emails to the superintendent, which I've been trying to be very conscientious to make sure she knows our discussion that I took from the last meeting when she responded and of course she can correct me if I misunderstood was that because I was thinking why do I have to get her permission and she was very clear that I wasn't getting her permission and I appreciated that but that she liked to just know and so we let her know before we go and I've been letting her know the morning that I'm going uh, but as far as the principal is concerned you're absolutely right they need to have a lot of notice and really it should be at their convenience and that's what I tried to do. Yeah. I never said, I'm, I'd like to come see you on Wednesday. I said, could you look at your calendar over the next couple of weeks and tell me when it's convenient for you? Okay. So maybe, I don't know how you put that in exactly, but that's good. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Moore, did you have a question? Yeah, I mean, okay. it's the same, because then Dr. Boone, I remember last time we had the, this conversation, Dr. Boone said, let me just give me a notice. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Okay. What I, if I could ask, and if you confirm an appointment, let me know then i mean yeah why wait till the morning of if you know a week out that you're going it's just okay you know um, i curtis got it okay and that's kind of superintendent or executive director the way we have it written so yes. i just want people to pay attention i just wanted to clarify that um, i agree with mr clanton i think we had talked about before invitation was different. This was really trying to get at when a school yeah. board member Remember, was, was trying, trying to, to visit. Yeah. Right. Okay. Great. Good feedback, everybody. Um, so <coughs> let's do this. We're gonna we're gonna pause on the code of conduct for board members. And Miss Bassine, I know that you um, wanted to. Um, you had sent an email about the, the violations portion of it. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to pause on that. We're going to move on to the committees, um, the goals and the protocols, and then we'll come back to that because I really want to make sure we get to that. So, all right. 
the, um, the board um, goals and the priorities. So there was a lot of work that went into place. A lot of community stakeholders came together to work on a very good strategic plan. They did a mission. They did um, uh, statements. Um, we set goals, priorities. I remember when um, Mr. Jordan and I first came on the board, we spent almost an entire day um, going through the board priorities and what we wanted. And it's been six, seven years almost since then. And so um, what I'd like to do is have a discussion with you all about where we see our board today with the current priorities that we have, the goals that we have um, in the accountability plan, and where we want to take it from there. So um, I know that um, Ms. Campson sent me some information um, on that. So I'll go ahead and let you go, and then we can just have a good discussion about that. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And I really like to also say thank you to everyone because I know I'm the one that asked for the special meeting so we could get this done. So I appreciate um, everyone agreeing and, and letting us move with it. What I'm going to pass around, the longer I have something waiting, because you know I had to wait to get to, get to this, uh, the more I do with it. But if I, what I tried to do, I, I think I mentioned last week that when I went to look at the committees, I was looking for student achievement, student improvement committees, and I was looking for school safety. And I did not find those. So the first thing I did, and this is just to give you a quick clue, this is the, the standing um, uh, uh, priorities and school board goals. I, there's nothing new on this first page. So what I did was, when I found that I didn't see any work committees on school achievement and school safety, and, and so I looked up the priorities, and here there are three priorities that have to do with school achievement. Why is there no work group on that? And um, there's a, and one, two, and um, seven have to do with student achievement, and uh, priority three has to do with school safety. And so I pulled out the, the, the board goals, and I see that the board goals are the ones that we usually always have, student achievement number one, uh, school safety number two and community engagement number three so I thought well the priorities are there the um, school board goals are there um, and so what I did when I thought well let's align them and see so if you look at page two I aligned the priorities with the goals and I made some suggested actions because it was the work that I wasn't seeing listed what are we doing if these are our priorities what are we as a board doing and so if you go down, you'll see, and I color-coded it because I'm so visual. So if it's red, it's goal one, student achievement. If it's blue, it's goal two, safe schools. And if it's green, it's goal three, engagement. So, and you can see where I've aligned the priority to the goal. And under each one of these, I've made a suggestion that we create some type of a work group, an action team, a task force, a standing committee. And so that's kind of what it looks like here. So for example, if you look at red, ensure full accreditation, which is goal one, uh, which is student achievement, increase academic achievement, which is the achievement gap one is priority two, and that's also goal one. And all the way down seven, the teachers, having high quality teachers is also part of goal one, which is student achievement, because we don't have high student achievement without high quality teachers. And then in blue, you'll see under safe schools, uh, which is goal two, is priority three. It's also prior, priority five because it has to do with climate, and priority six because it has to do with the facilities in which we provide our instruction. Um, goal three does not have a priority attached to it, so, so there's a lack of alignment there. And, and equity, it's not mentioned anywhere. Um, and I know the board is doing lots of work, so that's kind of the opposite, whereas we have a lot of work going on in something I feel is very important. And so my first thought is, why don't we have an equity goal, which is why the first page you see I, I had equity up there and I scratched it off, because I realized equity really goes under goal one, student achievement, because that's why we're looking at equity is to get that. But I was, you know, concerned that we're not really mentioning it in our priorities and our goals. It's such an important uh, part of the work that we do. So that's kind of what this one looks like. And that's why I suggested action in task force. The difference being uh, task force is something that you create with a short timeline 
they come up with their recommendations, they present them, and then it kind of dissolves or it moves on to become an action team. Action team I put because I don't like committees. They sound like nothing gets done. So on the next page, what I then did was did do the same thing to show the alignment from the other point of view, another lens, which was the goals first. So goals one, two, and three, and matched them to the priorities and made suggestions for work groups that would go under them, I know. And these are all just suggestions. This is what, this is what I do. I'm a trainer to do this kind of stuff. It, so I wanted to be sure that we aligned it all and then I have the suggestions of what I feel would be work groups. It may be more than you want. My priority for work groups, of course, are student achievement and school safety. And really, that's a task force for that. So this is kind of what I put together that I thought maybe could guide. This is nothing new except a couple, like at the bottom of that second page where I just made some suggestions about community engagement because we don't seem to have anything with that. And the equity piece that I wanted to make sure becomes more embedded. I want to suggest becomes more embedded. Um, so that's basically, but, but it's, it's all the same thing that the board's already done. It's just aligning priorities and goals and looking at the work you would then do if you consider it a priority or goal. So that I did, and then, and so with the, and, with, and I'll go through these real fast. Make your point and stop talking. <laughs> um, is I took all those suggestions for action the action teams, the task force, and I broke them down. And so that's what I'm actually submitting to you as a suggestion and a starting point for the board's discussion. And I'm sure all of you probably have other ones you think. And I know Tanya mentioned last time that she would like to see us do some work with reviewing our old goals because as we've said, and as Mr. Jordan emphasized, because it's been doing so much, we've been doing it before, maybe it's time to revisit the committees, especially if the committee work that we're doing is not aligned with our priorities and our goals. So that's what this sheet is. It's just every one of these action things. That's why I didn't talk about them when I just took you really briefly over what I did was because I put them in here as suggestions that we might discuss for updating the work groups that the, that the board has. So you can see, and they're under goals. I listed them under the goals. That's why I go in. It's red. And you can see the action, the work teams that I suggested. And, on, and the second page is blue under safe schools. I mean, my priority is a student academic achievement action team under goal one. My priority is safe and secure schools. I'd like to see a task force secure and safe and secure school task force and you can see suggested pointing this was just kind of a beginning I I mean I I was admiring Virginia Beach and how they got their task force up on school safety they reported out a few months later with their recommendations and they're and they are now already implementing those recommendations in all of their schools and then for the third goal I added military to that by the way I don't I think that that's such a priority for us and, and then I suggested something there. And then I also, back to my oversight, had something at the bottom. But anyway, this is just hopefully to stimulate some discussion about a direction that I would hope to see us go. I just want to see if we say it's a priority, if we say it's a goal, what are we doing with that? Okay. First, thank you for the effort that you put in the thought process to put in here. Um, some of some of this, you know, that you've um, incorporated and highlighted here, I see as beneficial um, as we, you know, as a new board come to a better understanding of our accountability plan and where we, uh, you know, as we discuss as a new board again, you know, what we might need to change, enhance, include in that accountability plan. You know, I'm digesting all that you've provided right now, but interestingly enough, I was going to come to the table with a broader question of, do we need committees? Um, you know, a lot of strong governance teams, you know, there's an argument against having committees because as we talked about in our retreat, do we take away the responsibility that we place on the superintendent and her team by having school board members sitting on standing committees and kind of 
um, you know, whose responsibility, that question of whose responsibility is it? So we have, you know, facilities right now. We have um, policy. And so policy is, is the one area because that is the role of the school board. That's the only committee that I think would be beneficial to continue if, if but I do would include that as part of this discussion. Um, but that w that's actually what I came to this meeting with is can we talk about uh, the benefit of having the committee? Do we feel like they're working? Do we, before we get down that road? And so, you know, on some of, you know, following some of your thoughts around this, I feel that everything that the board has been doing has been with under the umbrella of student achievement. I absolutely, you know, it has not been ignored. It has not been at the forefront. Um, and the accountability plan was done and created through an equity lens where, you know, putting the word out there is not, um, you know, that's a word, but what you see in the accountability plan are uh, indicators that we're going to monitor to look at how equitable we are being. And that's not just with student achievement, but that's with safe schools, that's with discipline, with um, community engagement. And so in all of those arenas, I, I see it as being the, uh, as Dr. using Dr. Boone's, a grease between the wheels, you know. And so I don't know, um, you know, so I'm, I'm just thinking out loud as, as you share some of these things and for us to consider as we think about whether the committees are really benefiting the work of the board in, in our governance role. Okay. Does anybody else have any other? Well, okay. this whole thing started because I agree with that. Okay. I, I, when I looked at the committees, I'm like, we're, we're, what are we doing with them? Right. When I'm in favor, obviously I'm in favor of work groups. This many maybe not, but I just put down what I felt would be beneficial because they're, they're all suggestions. But I think when, um, when it comes down to it, the public, our parents, hold this board responsible. And if I'm being held responsible for student achievement, if I'm being held responsible for safe schools, if I'm being held responsible for um, in increasing student engagement, bringing in the military into that form, because we see the wonderful things that Virginia Beach does with their partnership with the Ocean with Oceana, um, then I need to have a say in what's happening to the extent that it's necessary working with a group that includes the senior staff with the superintendent because obviously and that's why you see the senior staff mentioned that's who should be doing it um, but I want to have some input into the direction we go based on the priorities and I agree with all the priorities except for number four as a priority um, I think that's fine and something that's a nice goal to shoot for but I'm not sure why becoming a board of distinction in other words why getting an award would be a priority for us Mm -hmm. I can. I would like to see us become a board of a mm -hmm. distinction, but would I put it on my list of the top things I want to see happen with Norfolk Public School? No, I'd love to see it, but okay. when I read that, I think it's it's up here equal with mm -hmm. increasing student achievement. So what I'm hearing is, um, how do you all feel about our priorities right now as they stand? Don't like four. Okay. I personally believe four gets us to one um, because, okay. you know, uh, and the rest of them, <laughs> honestly. Okay. So yeah. it's, uh, you know, more than, it's not about awards. It's about our commitment to professional development, uh, which then translates into academic performance. So, yeah, and, okay. and I would agree. I mean, I, I think the award is the end, you know, it's, it's a residual of the work that goes in, but to be a highly um, efficient and functioning board, we've got to get the professional development. We have to attend, um, so I've. So we could put it under goal, goal one, because it sounds like that's what you're saying, that becoming a board of distinction it's fits under, and stu inclu including, I mean, our goal is to what? Teach children and keep them safe. Yeah, I think it's almost like a foundational, I'm sorry, but more of a foundational type of thing. If we are a high efficiently functioning board, then we can be the best governance team to help ensure governance and, and oversight and so forth for all these other things. So which so goal it's kind would of you a put it under? Because we really need to align here. Well, it's, 
we need alignment between what we're saying and what we're doing. Yeah, that's just, oh. I just don't know. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jordan. Yeah, and, um, I wish we didn't know about the VSB Board of Distinction Award because I think it is um, confused the language. So pretend like this didn't say Board of Distinction. Pretend That's, like it said Peak Performing Governance Team. I, I or think, Peak Performing yeah. Go I'm in. Board, board. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, I That's, like that much better. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's what yeah. this was referencing. Right. And so as part of being a Peak Performing Board is uh, understanding our role between uh, policy, as we talked about earlier in our norms, and who has responsibility for the day-to-day -day operations, the superintendent. It also kind of speaks to the uh, to the committee piece and the philosophy. So, as a peak performing board, we would establish priorities and goals and visions and expectations. We would then say these: this is what we want to achieve. Um, this is what it looks like and then we would task the superintendent and the administrative team to then come back and share with the board how it would get done so that fundamental piece of us setting the vision and setting the goals and being accountable to the community because it's part of that we are providing that community input into our vision our mission and our goals um, so I think that is important that's what I was trying to get at on the committee side, um, I think we have to be able to distinguish between the board committees, which is what we were having conversations about, versus um, action and implementation committees. So um, some of these, which I think also are great ideas, but they, they draw the board down uh, below the line and put us in a position where, frankly, nobody's gonna be held accountable because now you have board members stepping into roles with um, with senior staff and others when really we should be holding the superintendent accountable for the implementation of whatever it is that the board decides it wants to achieve and then move from there. And I would just like to put out, again, going back to the agenda piece that, uh, and where I agree with Ms. Campson before and still agree with her, to the extent that we can have a, uh, whether it's a work session or a workshop or some time, where as a full board and governance team, we can just talk through uh, what the accountability plan looks like, what the board calendar is for the year, what we've done and what we've not done. Because uh, personally, I thought like the priorities and the goals should come maybe in a September, October discussion. Because at, at that point, this is my view. At that point, we would have had the uh, the deep dive with the data. We would have had feedback on um, uh, safety, security, and so forth. And so having that data and information then would not only help us to look at whether or not we want to remove goals or add goals, or for that matter, if we want to change, uh, change priorities. But I think these are uh, very good pieces. Some of these, I believe, are... Uh, underway um, and we just have to be able to have an opportunity to share how they're underway and where they're underway and then have a discussion whether or not we feel they are meeting meeting our our, our goals and expectations this is a, mm -hmm. a version yes okay. mm -hmm. I'm sure I almost feel like um, so I know we have that big calendar that we um, haven't finished mm -hmm. yet but there has to be some carryover from the prior board on policy and I mean, and I guess the the accountability plan it's already kind of flushed out in there and, and the items that we're going to talk about um, and I guess that would be a um, I think we all still have that don't we or was that cleared out um, I think we got something at the retreat was it I don't know, did it still have yeah the big one did it it's still blank. have the, it's I mean there's blank. there's, there's, there's blank. some things in there that are that are you know due by a certain time but for the most part um, we can fill it in okay. with what we need are you talking about the calendar the board and yes the calendar? yes oh. mm -hmm. and right. what at the last oh, excuse me Matt, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. at the last um, agenda planning we were using that as a guide again around what times and when we you know certain things and so what had been populated in that were uh, in it, what has been populated includes the accountability 
reports that the, the um, accountability plan has dictated. So mm -hmm. I don't know uh, what we're looking for beyond that, but. Well, um, I really appreciate uh, Ms. Campson, this work that you've done on here, um, because it allows us to refocus, redirect, and go back to the accountability plan to make sure it's giving us what we expect. And so, um, do I hear, is there any other feedback that we all as a board need to take into consideration that we have brought to this meeting before we kind of go through what Ms. Campson has suggested? Because I want to make sure everybody is heard. May I, am mm -hmm. I allowed to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I need a clarification and then I want to offer a suggestion. Let me start with the suggestion. The third page of the second handout that Ms. Campson provided talked about a financial oversight standing committee. The board actually has a standing audit committee. Mm -hmm. who's Thank you for that information. I didn't right. know. Right. I, I thought you, I didn't know if the board uh, had reviewed what the existing committees are. There is an audit committee and part of its work is to look at our compliance requirements and certainly um, those compliance requirements, it, input from the board, making sure that that committee is uh, addressing <coughs> any particular concerns or areas that the board would, would suggest. Um, that group also works with our external auditors that we are required to um, uh, work with on an annual basis and we are part of the city's audit process. So I offer that for consideration. Um, I think the other thing, while these are aligned to the what have been the goal, uh, school board's goals and everything based on the strategic plan, it is completely silent on operational um, committees that are that have been in place and again is you know don't know what direction the board wants to go mm -hmm. but that includes those committees around um, um, student support services the discipline the the hearings and things related to that there is also our facilities and operations as we deal with another way That's of right. again monitoring our accountability around what we're doing as it relates to the CIP plans, what those prog what that progress looks like, what the spin down looks like, are there complications with any of the projects? And so those operational ones are, are this document is silent on that. Excuse me, just one minute. Actually, the facilities committee is saying the existing in front of it is actually mentioned under goal two. Okay, I, I apologize, I missed that. Um, and the third thing is I would just need a definition of an action team as it relates to student academic achievement. Obviously, that's our major focus. We only exist because of teaching and learning and what we need to do with our children. And so one of the challenges that is well, well documented in research for urban districts is the um, impact of initiative fatigue, excessive programs, and to Ms. Campson's point about what's the alignment. Having worked in the district, it had uh, an academic achievement uh, committee. I guess I would need to know what were the actions that are considered there because, again, a big part of my work, I wear two hats. I'm both the CEO, which is the operational side of the district, and I'm the chief instructional officer. And given that, falling within the board's expectations is what I direct. My biggest concern is that we would find um, mission creep in terms of the direction that we have taken to address student achievement that now can be um, directly linked to results that we're having. Um, we can talk about adjustments that have been made and everything else. You know, I've been very clear with both the prior board and this board that, yes, we have to meet those benchmarks, not stepping away from that at all. However, we have a responsibility to make sure that students are learning, not just preparing for the test. Um, I don't use this, this example to be... Um, 
disparaging. But if you read the state's report on the testing issue with Carver Elementary School in Richmond, which is a public report, it is a very clear statement of when you chase the test scores, you get those. And what generated the concern that led the state to do this investigation were parents who said, yes, my child passed the test, but they are failing everything once they got to sixth grade. And so when we look at research around effective urban districts, that idea of um, the centralized curriculum and instruction process with a gradual release to schools who have had extreme success. And as we shared with the board last week, the new accountability system where we will be looking at growth and looking at um, the achievement gap as it relates to the various subgroups. I, I just need to know the definition of action. I mean, I, I see some things here, but that's a descriptor of what to do. I just want to understand what the action piece is as it relates to that particular committee. The action piece is that we're actually doing something instead of just sitting there listening. Um, that, that the school board who is held responsible by the citizens of this city, when, the, when they're concerned about something, they're not, they're, if, they're, if they have a child in, that's just finished an elementary school in an unaccredited school, and that child is headed to an unaccredited middle school, which feeds into an unaccredited high school, they're upset. They're not blaming the teachers. They're not blaming the principal. They're blaming this governance team. That's who they blame, and with good reason, because ultimately this team is accountable for every single child who is in an unaccredited school, for every single child who is not being successful and working on grade level and being proficient. This is who the citizens of Norfolk hold accountable for that, as they should. I'm accountable right now for every single child in this school district who is not proficient. The minute I swore an oath, that's what I became accountable for. Mm -hmm. And I need to see what's going on and, have to, and, and be able to participate to a certain, I'm not saying takeover operations, but I'm saying have an ongoing input mm -hmm. into what's happening. And I, and I think that that's perfectly reasonable because I'm the one being held accountable. And, I, and as I said, and in the end, we are. This board is accountable for what's happening in our schools. This board, more than the teachers, more than the principals, this board is the ultimate accountability. This is where it rests. We're responsible for it. If we want to know why a school, why is Campus Dell still not accredited, we need to hold up our mirrors and look. Okay. Dr. Claire. Boone, and then Ms. Bassine, then um, Mr. Clayton. I, too, took an oath to take care of the 30,000 students in this district. A school board hired me because of my background and ability to, to do this work. Are we where we need to be? No, but in two and a half years, we're a lot further than what I inherited. I'm and sure, yeah. so um, the inference, the potential insinuation around whether or not I'm doing my job is the role of the evaluation piece. And quite frankly, I'm offended by those, the last set of comments as though I don't have a role, as though I am not taking on a level of accountability, and I'm offended by that. Excuse me, but what I said, this governance team, which includes the superintendent. Okay, okay. All right. Ms. Bassine, yeah. Mr. Clean, let's, let's try, guys, let me, we're, we are all here because we care so deeply about all of the children that we serve in this city. I would ask that we try to keep our comments positive, pertinent to the discussion, and, uh, and be respectful of each other and the roles that we are here for. Okay, so Ms. Bassine and Mr. Clayton. Um, <clears throat> so along the same lines as Dr. Boone, I was going to state the same thing, similar in that you know we have been doing something we you know this past board we developed you know i feel like i keep coming back to the accountability plan that is the st student achievement is the umbrella which all of this falls under every month every time we're um you know at, in a in a school board meeting 
and all the time and hours we spend in between is all around student achievement. Um, so to say, you know, what are we doing there uh, is, is a misstatement. Um, and based on the discussion we've just had, um, I am in opposition of having any kind of committee around that. Um, because to me right now, um, I think it's an open door to getting in the weeds. Once we get in those weeds, we can no longer hold our superintendent accountable for, for the work. So um, okay. as we move along, I'm in opposition okay. to that. And so. Okay, Mr. Clayton. Okay, um, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I wanna go back to an item that was mentioned earlier about the committees. Um, and, and just from good governance that you really want to have committees so that, that some additional work and extension um, can happen. Um, I want to uh, thank um, Ms. Campson for the work that she's done on this here. And I th think that um, there are some opportunities here. Um, but I also think and if she might be amenable to um, look at some of the task force items that you suggested, maybe we might be able to roll them into some of the other committees. Um, but I do recommend that we, because uh, school safety uh, and safety schools is such a, mm -hmm. a topic that maybe the board might be willing, um, because it really should be a shared um, piece with our community and other stakeholders, um, and you know PTA and so forth. Um, that we might look at that as maybe a task force. It's not a standing committee that's here forever, Here's but that force. we're showing the community that we are focused on that, and that is an important item, um, and that we you know we could set and you know the superintendent could designate um, who within the administration could work with that task force to kind of generate some items that could potentially go to policy or so forth. Um, and then the last thing, uh, I remember, uh, and, and actually Mr. Jordan, uh, that's one of the groups we served on together, um, under school board goal number three, when we talk about community, military, and parent engagement, um, that we might even give some consideration of looking back um, at st establishing, because um, I don't think that we have a cohesive kind of uh, a body that we as a governance team or even a board um, can use as a sounding board. So something like the guiding coalition that we used to have, and I think Dr. Boone, you were out when we had that, um, that we might even place that as something that we look at establishing there. Um, but I, I think these are, there's nothing here that you presented that I don't think it's important. Um, but I would um, think that we could get ourselves in, a, in an issue of burnout um, if we <laughs> added so many things. But I do believe that raising them to the, um, the, the importance that you've done here, that we can incorporate them into these committees. But I would strongly suggest that we look at the uh, task force on safe and secure schools um, and, that, and that we look at maybe possibly establishing like a, a guiding coalition type of thing that we used to have. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Ms. Martin. Was Dr. Boone, did you have something? Sorry, no, did you? Okay. okay. Well, um, along the lines of, you know, goal two on the accountability plan, it doesn't mention anything about um, hard and soft security of the schools. It's really internal to the schools. And so um, I'm wondering, I mean, I, I do, you know, I have a background in emergency management, and I do think it's really, it's one of the topics that I would say would be a, a good a temporary addition to mm -hmm. our committee list. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure, you know, that and or really going back through this list and um, with, you know, after this meeting and really looking at how we can incorporate some of these things that we're okay. talking about here, these okay. priorities, realigning, and also making sure that everything's included. Okay. All right. Mr. Jordan? Yeah. Just so um, in terms of what's been said thus far, so, you know, I shared, um, we've been referencing the, the Quinn book quite a bit. So part of what, what we did was we asked the board to read the Quinn book, and then we had a discussion around it. And then we went through the process of determining what things in there we thought were relevant, what things we wanted to carry over, what things we wanted to add. But it, it gave us a point of being on the same page. Part of when uh, Dr. Gabriel and I first joined the board, the Council of Great City Schools had just come out with a report uh, looking at middle schools. And in their report, they did a variety of uh, uh, evaluation assessments, and part of it was the board. And part of what came out of that was that they felt at the time the board was focused on operational and a lot of other things. So we kind of took all that into consideration and borrowed. So if you look at, you know, if you read the Quinn book, it speaks to the accountability plan. 
Uh, we just focused on the school board portion at that time because we knew we were in transition and knew that we would have a fully elected board. So we didn't want to shackle any new board, but we wanted to have enough of accountability as a board that we could put some things in place. Um, when you look at some of the norms, the protocols, the violation, all those things come right from that Quinn book. So I think it might be helpful for us if we want to, and even the philosophy around committees. Mm -hmm. So Quinn and I think Carver and some others recommend that you have a board committee of one and that you stay away from committees. Others recommend that you do have committees. And so we never agreed previously uh, whether or not we would just move towards what Ms. Bassine said and just have the board as one. But we kind of did a hybrid where we kept some committees like the facilities committee. We added the policy committee because we didn't feel like we were focusing on policy, which was our responsibility. But we were very cautious about adding two other committees because part of the best practice recommendation was what Ms. Basine mentioned that it's easy for us to get, get down in the weeds and not stay, stay at our level. Mm -hmm. So however we move forward, um, you know, it might be helpful to um, uh, next time we discuss this, have somebody facilitate so then all the school board members can just be engaged as, it, it puts too much burden, I think, on the chair to try to manage all that. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think we just have to pick a philosophy. Mm -hmm. If we can, we can continue down with Quinn uh, and then build upon that, we can do an evaluation assessment of what exists and do our own little SWOT analysis and then determine how we build as a team moving forward. But we've got to have some type of uh, philosophical process around what does governance mean to this team and then let that guide the rest of the work. Otherwise, we're going to, it's just going to be a, a, a challenge okay. moving forward. Okay. Kind of building off of what, um, Mr. Jordan said too is um, in, maybe instead of jumping into the decision of making committees or not, um, and, and in particular this emergency management, you know, school safety mm -hmm. piece, um, would we would it be a viable option to start by requesting a report, like an, an overall assessment of what is being what is available to the schools as well, far as I security resource officers. Um, locked doors, you know, cameras, things like that. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that would come as a result of the work done in that particular group. As Ms. Kim, is that what you I'll say? That was my point of having it be a task force. It's not a forever group. It's something that we call, we could, and we can certainly use the Virginia Beach model. They established a task force that included uh, their superintendent, and other people from the school system, and they included the police, the Navy, the firefighters, the mm -hmm. city planners, and they surveyed and looked at the needs, and over, what, three months, they came back and gave a report to the school board um, of recommendations mm -hmm. that were adopted. Um, I can't remember how many, seven or eight is what the, that superintendent mm -hmm. said, I think. And they immediately started implementation. For example, their main, their primary one was what Norfolk already has, mm -hmm. the buzzer system. But they implemented it. They're in, in the middle of installing those now. So it was a fast-moving thing because it's a safety consideration. Okay. I mean, certainly that would be the first thing I would pull out of here would right. be the safety task force. Ms. Okay. Bessine. I, and Dr. Boone, correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to remember I feel like every year we used to get the update from crisis August. management. It's, in August, it's, right? it's, it's, it's on the agenda for August. August. Okay, mm -hmm. so I, I always saw that as an opportunity to get the overview about, you know, what our procedures and process is. Um, and perhaps from that we might learn more about, um, you know, with questions about what direction we might want to go in. And if I may, mm -hmm. um, to the point about what's in place, that's exactly what we spent this year doing when we brought in Mr. Walker as the Chief Safety and, Secu Chief Safety and Security Officer is so that we could have a proactive approach to planning for school safety rather than a reactive approach. And so he has been that person working directly with the uh, Norfolk Police Department, the Norfolk Fire Department. Um, He's also city's emergency management. I serve on the city's emergency management team. But we too did an internal assessment 
of what our needs are. And as a result of that, there are things that are going on um, that we can provide updates to the board and then see where the board would like to go from there. But we've done a lot and we'll be doing a lot that we've already built into the budget for this year, both using uh, local dollars as well as the Title IV dollars of okay. what we did. Okay. So, Mr. Clinton. Could there be a possibility that the, I'm, I'm great and I'm hearing this about the report out and so forth, but maybe that the, one of the functions of this particular task force could be educating the broader community, our parents, um, other stakeholders or groups, what actions are being taken and how they might even be able to support, um, you know, school safety. Just one general caution, not pushback. Mm -hmm. Some safety things we can only dis I oh, yeah. re ask that we discuss in closed session because if we lay out our safety plans, Definitely. we've opened up ourselves to problems. Mm -hmm. so, I totally understand. Okay. So right. are we saying that we're going to move ahead with, with the task force on safety or are we saying that we're going to continue talking about it? We're going to get a report next. So, so this is this is where I think I think that everybody has brought up some very good points about blending the um, thoughts that Ms. Camson has brought forward um, to the board, um, looking at our governance philosophy, um, making sure that we are aligning our goals with our priorities, and making sure that the agenda is reflective of the continuous. Um, uh, monitoring and check-in that we want to have as it relates to uh, the accountability plan. Um, as far as moving forward with the um, safe and secure, let me just make sure I'm saying this right, for, is it school board number two? Yes. Okay, with moving forward for that, um, is it, it is it the will of the board to move on that or to wait until we hear we're going to get some crisis plans in uh, next week? Um, there is some work that's currently being done, as I've heard Dr. Boone state. But what I'm hearing from Ms. Campson is that there's a need to have an upfront and center discussion about safety in our schools. And that what you're saying here is safety. Let me see here. As it relates to um, bullying, mental health, and increased school security. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of this is being done. I will remind the board of the trauma informed care presentation mm -hmm. we did in May. That whole focus was again, what are we doing to support social emotional needs around school safety, too? Because everything is not about. Um, technical and physical responses, but what are mm -hmm. we also doing to support the students? Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm well aware that this district under Dr. Boone's leadership is doing a lot in taking a, and, and I mean, the, the hiring of the security person um, I'm, is wonderful and we're doing things with mental health I, and we've increased some things. I, we're doing a lot, but I just feel that we need to do what many districts are doing which is to get a group together, pull it all together. Because, you know, she's, there are probably m many, many things going on in the schools that make them safer, but there are other things that we need. You know, I, we have no security in our elementary schools. Um, okay, that could be a, like a suggestion. That well, would that would certainly a, be a suggestion for me as a I principal, see what you're okay. is that there's no, no security mm -hmm. person, nobody at the, at the door for mm -hmm. doing it. Our schools are easily broken and you know easily could be done and plus the ongoing bullying bullying which is what all the security first of all started with was the fact that we have mm -hmm. problems with bullying okay. so i would still out of all these as i said at the beginning this was just my thoughts mm -hmm. coming out mm -hmm. on paper of what we could do mm -hmm. the two were the two that i originally sent to the board members three weeks ago which was student academic achievement and safe schools those were always my two priorities. This is me having three extra weeks to think about what, <laughs> well, you know, my thing, they didn't we, make the agenda. We know you put a lot and, and, so, this. and so yeah. I lay awake at night thinking about, yes. this is what I do, school change. This yes. is me, school change. Yes. I am not a status quo person. I'm always looking at the status quo thinking, it's the 21st century. This looks like something from the 20th century. What can we do to make it better? Well, and so we, then I get up at 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning and I start taking notes on it or I'm out walking and I'm thinking about what else can we do to make our schools better. It, it's, it's, 
Okay. Maybe a little obsessive. <laughs> Got it. Let me move on to Miss Bassine. And then we're, it is 5.30. I okay. think that we've had some good, good discussion. Okay, Miss Bassine, and then we're going to put a bow on this. Okay? No, after that, I, I just lost my <laughs> train. Sorry. Uh, It'll come back. Can I, can I take her 30 seconds then? <laughs> All right, 30 seconds. So, again, I just want to reiterate, I think that what Miss Campson has put forward is valuable. I think what our challenge is we have to speak to it in terms of board level expectations. Mm -hmm. So if the board level expectation is we want to have the safest schools in the Commonwealth of Virginia, however we define it, then we set that as a goal. Mm -hmm. We set what that means to us and how we measure it. And then we have, you know, obviously the superintendent there, and then we charge the superintendent mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. off and say, how do you get this done? And that's where, whether it's a task force, whether it's something else comes up. But that, to me, is, is our role as a board to agree on the goal, what it looks like, you know, working with the administration on how you measure it, and then send them off to okay. uh, I have to an implement. example that I'm going to use okay. with, with that. But, Ms. Bassine, oh, you sorry. remembered? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, and as, okay. you were, as you were talking. Right. So, you know, my recommendation is, you know, this year we're, there's, there's a lot that we're going to be engaged in strategic planning. And even, I think, through that, umbrella there may be opportunities to look at these um, areas mm -hmm. so you know I tend to lean on the side of not creating new committees at this point in time just till we figure out you know how this all fits into mm -hmm. um, our strategic planning process we also have the ed planning process which in my understanding might incorporate some of the safe schools piece because I know as they as we look talk about design as we talk about um, educational planning you know I know safety is one of the considerations uh, as part of that uh, planning process um, and I also think that um, you know some of the things that are mentioned you know are also fall in school the school health advisory committee <coughs> our policy committee and ways that we can strengthen safe schools through policy development okay. and adoption so okay. so so let me I just want to uh, can I just say one okay. one last thing yes all right I'm going official that I'd like to see a safety task force for Norfolk Public Schools set up immediately the will of the board will be what decides this but that's my position it's that important to me to make sure that our children are safe and once again I spent 15 years as a school principal and many years for that as a teacher and they're concerned that in the elementary schools we have no security and so I'm very I mean Sandy Hook were, was elementary schools it was first graders so I'm going on that's right. what I want that's okay. what I'm requesting I, I, and I we'll appreciate go with the, the, the directness actually I do because we 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 discuss but I do appreciate the directness um, how does everyone feel about that um, we can we can Go around and do that. Yeah, exactly. And then we can kind of discuss how that would work. I mean, certainly this is like would, a sketch here, but I mean, Madam Chairman, I would if we could just go around and get the general census of what the board, how we feel about the task force, and be able to move forward, and then maybe come back, you know, later time and sign it out. Not here, just right, in the right, of exactly. Miss mm -hmm. Martin, um, I fullheartedly agree with the the task force idea I have from the beginning. I've seen mm -hmm. this as a big. Um, you know, it, it needs to be elevated to that to mm -hmm. that level, just right now, and um, and it's going to have policy implications and budget implications, and so um, you know, two of the things that we're responsible for, and so it can impact our decisions moving forward. So I'd like to um, you know, get that plan. Of course, of t um, I'm looking forward to that on the agenda, the upcoming meeting, and um, and I don't know, you know. When we're, are we going to yeah, vote we'll, on it now we'll, or no? Later? Let, okay, let's so. just hear what the group wants okay. to do, and then we'll we'll figure out how that's going to come together, um, as far as the agenda and, okay. and going forward. Mr. Jordan. So the question is about moving forward with a task force. Yes. Uh, I think it's premature. Uh, I think that we need to have a good sense of uh, big picture and what exists. And uh, from a review of that uh, analysis, then we would determine what we would do from there. I think 
for the board to establish a task force at this point without the benefit of the background um, moves us out of governance into operations and doesn't necessarily have the opportunity for consideration of how it's going to be managed and staff in relationship to all the other things that we have on the on the agenda i think it's premature the board needs to be clear on its visions goals and expectations and then a task force may be something that evolves from that but i think putting the task force first is putting the cart before the horse okay thank you Ms. Smith, welcome. I know you kind of came in um, midway. I don't know if you have any thoughts on the discussion. I can kind of come back to you if you want. Or yeah, that's okay. What Mr. Jordan said um, pretty much said what I was thinking very well. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just we haven't we haven't given an opportunity to see what the current administration truly has in place to try and make any kind of decision on and my concern is the for me the waters are starting to get muddy in terms of where does policy stop and operation begin and how far over are we getting into that i'm i'm okay i'm missing it okay it's, it's just it. all right <laughs> miss basine as i stated earlier um my recommendation is to hold on and i wholeheartedly you know safety is no doubt on everybody's mind i think we've begun to address it but i you know i would like to wait till we really assess what is in place how we're doing and then go from there and really use the data to guide us and and also input from Mm -hmm. from other stakeholders okay mr clinton um i agree that um we need to have uh, a task force um i i understand and i and I, um, and I do hear and understand the other side um, for which my colleagues present however i also remind that um, quinn also talks about a responsibility that we have as a board to educate our community and to also be the face in the community and i think that what um, my other two colleagues across the table are stating is that um this is an opportunity for us to elevate this particular uh, situation and this particular topic. It's not saying that we're discounting anything that's coming from the administration, and there's nothing wrong with establishing a task force and being able to speak with the administration, being assigned to it to figure out what do we do. But I think that um, we have a responsibility to educate the community um, and even as board members to be able to go out and um, to effectively let them know what we're doing. Um, and I think that we can work that out and flesh that out, and it doesn't stop us from doing the other things that we need to. Um, the superintendent has stated that this is the year that we've got to go back and reevaluate our strategic plan. Um, but I think that in, um, in the essence of everything that's happened in the community and the things that we've seen, um, that we as a board are sending a strong statement that we feel as though if we move forward with the task force that this is an important item for us. Mm -hmm. And I think the task force is, is appropriate as well. Um, I, don't, I don't know how it would um, Function um, particularly with um, uh, what it's what it's going to look at, but I think that at least what it can start to do is gather the information that is already in place and start to look at what the concerns of the community are, because the conversation I think does need to be elevated, um, and we need to demonstrate that as a board. And I I do hear um, you all out that word as you know policy and operations kind of mix and. Do we have an understanding as to what we're already doing now? I think I see this as the opportunity of bringing all of that together, getting the voice of the community, and then coming forth with the recommendations because maybe the community does need to be educated on certain things that are already being done and being addressed, like PBIS, like trauma-informed care, like our bullying campaign, like the fact that every single one of our schools has a buzzer in order to get in. Um, our policies implemented uniformly throughout the division to make sure, you know, when folks come in, they announce who they are, driver's license is enforced, et cetera. But let me just step back for a second and also say that um, I'm having flashbacks from when I first started on the board and I came into this, uh, Mr. Jordan and I, um, like a deer in headlights. And we had almost two whole days where we discussed this. And we had data that we looked at. And I didn't really understand a lot of what I was looking at. Um, 
until it started to sink in and I started to see things in place. So I don't want any of us to feel as if we are um, we're missing the mark because I think our group has just come together and we do have to work on the governance piece and we have to work on the fact that we know we have a lot of um, goals and expectations on us from the community for our kids and we're going to get there but we have to be very purposeful with our time and and what we expect so going back to Mr. Dorn what you had said you know what's our mission our vision our goals you know our board if we say we want to put a spaceship on Mars that is the board saying this is what we want to do we want to get to Mars we want to get to Mars by this time this is what we want to accomplish when we get there and guess what Dr. Boone is the one to do it she's going to figure out the team she's going to figure out the supplies she's going to figure out the tests. she's going to do all of it and if I could boil it down to that simple analogy I think we have to just and Dr. Boone correct me does that sound about right um that's what we have to constantly um do a check-in with ourselves and remember that we do have the ultimate oversight we do have the ultimate governance how we manage ourselves and hold ourselves accountable is going to be a part of that process and i think that this is a very good very good first first outline um for our discussion um so I, I really appreciate everybody's feedback on this. To recap um, and kind of go back to the committees, though, there are some committees that we have to have, Governor School, WHRO. I have not heard any um, of feedback from anybody about questions about those because I don't, we, we can't change those as far as I know. So. Um, what I am hearing, yeah. if, if I could, the, those aren't committees. Those are actually policy Sorry, boards. Sorry, po po policy Governor boards. Governor School CSAP yes. um, are policy boards. Thank, so. thank you, Dr. Boone. Yes. So we only have uh, five standing yeah. committees. So um, Mr. Butts provided us with um, a, a document which goes over that information. And what I am hearing from you all is that um, looking at audit and finance facilities um, and even to the extent of student support to see how that might be um, restructured so that it is providing the information that we need as it aligns with the goals and the priorities and we need to work that out yeah, I mean I don't see I think the committees are fine with the standing right now, and I, I think that um, you know, as we're trying to get into the work that we're doing, Madam Chair, that we we made you know, for at least for this year, we kind of roll with what we have, um, but we put it on the table for us to kind of look as we start looking at the new strategic plan and um, action items mm -hmm. that we go ahead and take make that an item that we a focus. Do we realign certain committees to make sure that we're focused on those of those action items? And, because I, I know you raised well you know if we're not discussing it sounds like the will of the board is to continue with committees and if that is while we as we you said talking. as you know and I had mm -hmm. mentioned that earlier as well that you know keeping things kind of where they are let everybody see how we function uh, with those committees and see what our needs are based on the data and input we have from our stakeholders and then move from there but <coughs> it sounds like everyone would be comfortable with keeping things as they are I make a request in regards to that because we are assigned to these committees could we mm -hmm. ask Sherman to send us um, the contact people for each of the committees we're assigned to uh, I know he gave us a um, I mean I'm looking at one that I'm on and it that it met in August I missed that one the it looks like it's an every other month one and, and the very next one is uh, to be announced if I could I think if we had the information about who, who's who we can who we contact and because I'm feeling kind of like I already see I missed one 
Okay. Before we were officially assigned, I missed oh, my first one. If I may, you, you probably haven't missed anything. Yeah. Normally the procedure for those that are the regional boards and groups outside of the district operated the ones. The ones that say external are those ones you're addressing? Yeah, yeah. like the Governor's School, Access, um, Coretta, CSEP. They are waiting to hear from us who the, the representative is and who the alternate is, and then you will get into that contact loop for, for any of those. Um, like I said, the Access, Governor's School for the, and CSEP, Hereta, um, and, and again, once, once those, the information is provided to those groups, because we've already had the request, then you get into the loop along with the rest of that governance team. All right, that would be very helpful, those. thank you. Yes. Um, I did notice before, um, NPL is not on the external list. Yeah, the, so I mean, they're on the external list, they're not, on, like their meeting's not What's listed. NPL? So no, I no, think no, it was library. because, oh. um, so Sherman, what we should do is on this list, put on the, um, so NPL is on the, it's right there, the NPL? It's not on the, um, it has a set. Uh, meeting time it's the right third Tuesday. But, well, I think the, the, what it was the first page though are those that are considered voting. To be governance. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. for example, CSAP, there's one board member from each of the eight member districts that functions just like this school board, and so that's why that was set aside. Anything else, the the board is generally supportive of that, such as the library or NRHA and other those. They don't have a voting requirement and component with it so I think that was the oh, so difference in how they were not non-voting then it's, the, it's right. not on here more well observers. it's on the Small no I'm talking about the external dates of when they are and oh, oh the, dates. the dates on I mean, there. we can we can put the yeah. dates on there yeah that's um, all. for definitely I mean we're this this we're gonna have to um, continue to add on Madam Chair yes so um, uh, I didn't have a committee uh, if we're going to continue with committees, I'm willing to do the uh, it's called facilities, whatever we named it. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think we changed that. Okay. Facilities. Is and then uh, also the reason we created the legislative committee, there was a time when the school board um, eliminated uh, school board and school division eliminated the. Um, the liaison yeah, the between liaison or the lobbyists. Mm -hmm. We, the you lobby. know, one time we had mm -hmm. our own person. Then we, uh, and I think we still have a contract with the advantage, ad strategies. advantage strategies. So it might be an opportunity to free up the legislative committee because really, if you remember, you know, Dr. Stewart mm -hmm. was kind of leading that effort because we didn't mm -hmm. have anyone doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but it may be a little redundant having the legislative committee and the. Uh, um, the lobbying firm that could be something again that comes from the board as a whole uh, but I'm willing to do the um, uh, facilities yeah I facilities worked I worked up. with um, mrs. Doyle um, with that and I think that the scope of what that committee was and what it can be now can be very limited and maybe the folks on that committee can serve as um, like a contact to get that information out to everybody else I mean, certainly they're going to be sending all the information to all of us but there are a couple of um, things that I think require a little bit extra organization. Take your legislator to school. The the, the um, our our statements of opposition. You know, the legislative the legislative agenda. agenda. Oh, yeah. 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 Legislative agenda. yeah. And I don't disagree yeah. with you. I'm just saying. I just think that that's one of those that and the we board can is trim. Kind of we can trim. We can trim. Yeah. I think they would like that too. Yeah. Since I know. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. a <laughs> I'm like, Sign up sure. for everything. I'll try to take stuff off your plate. She's. So. Uh, She's going to have a I, I, mini I, office I, next I, to her other office. The back of the seat, I, yeah, I shared with Madam Chair the idea um, and Dr. Boone about the potential of doing um, Take Your Legislative Day and then combining it with our um, what we've done as a legislative breakfast or maybe doing it as a lunch, but doing it as an opportunity to get our legislators in the schools um, with board members um, on a particular day and then coming back and culminating. These are the, um, the legislative agenda items that we have. Um, and being able to get the administration maybe to identify a date so that we can maybe get a save the date out and then begin to work on that. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Our experience has been the legislators appreciate the morning meetings because mm -hmm. the yeah. breakfast, because it gives them a chance to, to go out. 
and then being able to work with them individually on scheduling outside of that day, it's kind of hard to get them to do a full day with us. We, we talked about that before, and when we polled them, they weren't able to, to give up a full day. But a lot of times, I know uh, the state legislative folks are in, in their districts on Fridays, and a lot of times that's the day that they, would, they have time and would love to go to the board, go to schools with board members. All right. Um, well, I I really do appreciate all of the feedback and the good conversation that we've had uh, here today. I think it's provided some um, good um, starting points for us. Certainly, I know that even though we discussed our goals and priorities, I know that the division is very focused on what it is doing right now as far as uh, getting things together for uh, the teachers and the children and preparing so um, what I'll do is um, Mr. Clayton and I and Dr. Boone will sit and we'll look at the agenda and see where we can pick this conversation up next and if it needs to be with um, you know an entity where we bring someone else on to kind of go through it a little bit more in depth we'll look at that um, but we are going to move forward with the safe schools that is something that I have heard that we're going to move forward and we'll discuss what that looks like um, a little bit more. Okay. Anything else from folks? Some and we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the um, to this. We'll come back to the violations uh, piece the of code this. Of ethics, yeah. And the code yeah. of ethics. Okay. Madam Chair, I just want to find yes. out if there are any of my colleagues who are going to join me in this Duncan booth. <laughs> I've already else. responded. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, unfortunately, I'd be out of town. Otherwise, I'd be here with you. So, I, okay, schedule. I know. I do right. it. Am I too? I was trying to. Yeah, I'm going to be out of town. As well. Okay. All right. Out of town. I might be. I'm not yeah. sure. Okay. I know. That's All right. Be. Very and good. I do it, so. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was pregnant last year, so that was my excuse. Oh, all right. Well, uh, <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. And with that, we will adjourn the meeting. <laughs>